Hey guys, this is Mark Filler. In this video, I'd like to show you support for push notifications uh, with Back Endless, of course, on Apple TV or TVOS devices in general. This is uh, quite exciting because we've had uh, Back Endless for iOS quite some time and recently we've been doing some work to uh, broaden uh, the support for different types of devices and now we have uh, support for tvOS which is fantastic so pretty much every single feature that is provided by back endless and uh, you could use on iOS can now be used on the tvOS devices but today we'll be focusing just on push notifications uh, I have this dual screen setup where you can see right here in the corner uh, the um, my uh, television set screen and uh, I have right there uh, tvOS running with uh, just a, basically a standard setup and uh, on the other screen uh, this is this is my Xcode project and uh, what I'm going to do I will just run it first so we can see uh, some basic support for push notifications but then I'll show you some some additional other some other pretty cool things so now that the application is launching and uh, what it does uh, when it runs for the very first time it's going to ask you to give the permission to send push notifications. So I'm gonna click allow and uh, provide uh, uh, access to sending out push notifications. And this big push button in the middle of the screen, if I were to press it, uh, which is what I'm doing, it sends out a push notification that goes out to uh, APNS, Apple Push Notification Service, and it comes back and right here, uh, as you can see where it says, this is my silent test message. This is the actual payload of the push notification. Uh, as you can see in the code, I'm gonna scroll down to it. And uh, in here, you see that we're adding this header where it says, this is my silent test message. The push notification comes in as a silent push notification, but then we're basically taking the content, taking the payload and displaying it as a message on Apple TV. This is a uh, very straightforward. Uh, you can send push notifications using Backendless APIs. In fact, let me switch to Backendless Console. This is the app that this Apple TV connects to. In fact, if I go to Messaging and select my default channel, because that's the channel that the app uh, uh, registers with, under Devices, if I were to select iOS, you can see there's device registration. So this is, this is the actual device registration for my Apple TV. Uh, to demonstrate how to send push notifications using API, I'm going to use this new feature that we have in messaging. Uh, you can see this new icon that looks like open book because this is for API documentation. You click on this icon and you can select a bunch of different formats, uh, open API, Swagger, uh, Postman Collection, uh, Wa uh, RAML, Waddle, uh, API Blueprint, a bunch of them. Uh, and the back analyst will generate uh, the API in the selected format that you can take elsewhere. So here, for the sake of demo, I'm going to generate OpenAPI Swagger 2.0. And uh, it, here it is. This is the file that is generated. I'm going to copy it. And then I will switch over to uh, Swagger.io. They have a really cool thing called Swagger Inspector. So I'm going to run this inspector, and I will paste the URL that was generated by Backendless, which is the definition for the API, into here and I will import all these APIs. So now we have all the APIs for backendless, for uh, sending out push notifications, uh, getting the status of the message, pretty much everything that you have in there in here. So I will select this route, which essentially is uh, 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 the, the API for sending a push notification. I will remove a bunch of stuff that really is not needed, uh, specifically all the scheduling, and uh, uh, for the message, I'm going to say that this is going to be a test. We don't really need the publisher ID. Uh, the headers are very important. So for the headers, in order to send out a push notification, it needs to be uh, a silent push notification. So here it means that iOS content available header must be present and the value is null. And then the header that is expected by the application itself is my message because that's what uh, we've been sending out. It can be anything. Whenever you do iOS content available, you dictate the headers. But in this case, it is called my message. So let me just uh, specify my message uh, with a content push 
notifications are cool. And that's it. So who, who is this notification gonna go, is going to go out to? Well, in this case, it's going to this specific device ID. So let's copy this device ID and then put it right here as a single cast. So we can remove this push broadcast completely. Okay. Now, if I were to do, uh, if I were to send this request, it is sent. Now, check it out. It says push notifications are cool. So we, uh, in, to put it all together, uh, first of all, we have push notifications working as a single cast targeting specific uh, TV, specific Apple TV right here. Second of all, you can see that I was able to extract a Swagger document for a specific messaging channel in Backendless, uh, which is right here, default channel, and I went to this uh, generating API. I imported it into Swagger and I was able to use this API directly from, uh, from Swagger.io uh, to target my TV, but you could actually picture that you could have your own uh, uh, device, your, your, your own application to send out push notifications. Okay, now something else that I wanted to show you is I'm going to uh, step outside of that app. Right here, you can see that there is this uh, good looking icon for my uh, TV app. Uh, and what I will do is I will send out a different type of notification. In this case, that notification is going to be a badge. So I will modify this header to say iOS badge. And let's just say that the value is going to be two. So if I were to send this notification, notice that right here in the corner, we got the badge for that uh, uh, app that contains number two. And uh, which is also another really, really cool feature if you're building an app for tvOS and you wanna use badge updates for your app, you can easily do that too using Backendless. Uh, so that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, there is a lot in there to digest, but uh, uh, the cool thing from the programming side on the, uh, on the Apple TV, in the Apple TV project, the APIs are very similar to iOS. Uh, it works for both Objective-C and Swift, and you can use Backendless library, which would basically be using it exactly the same way as you did on iOS. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you have any feedback, please write it in the comments. And uh, until next video, happy coding.